time under tension is widely held to be a fundamental muscle building principle. It's simply how long your set lasts. It's commonly said extending your time under tension can confer additional muscle hypertrophy, with some also suggesting 30 to 60 seconds is the optimal time under tension range for maxing hypertrophy. In this video, we'll examine the scientific evidence supporting time under tension, but we'll also examine the scientific rebuttals to this. We'll try and establish whether minimum and maximum time under tension thresholds exist and whether there could be any benefit to only slowing down the lowering phase of an exercise. Let's dive in. Muscle hypertrophy is a result of myofibular protein synthesis, the creation of the proteins that make our muscles bigger, exceeding the rate of myofibular protein breakdown, the destruction of those same proteins. A study out of Canada by Bird and colleagues indicates a longer time under tension increases myofibular protein synthesis more. They established when training three sets on the leg extension with a 30% one rep max load, increases in myofibular protein synthesis 24 to 30 hours post training were greater after using a 6 second lifting and 6 second lowering tempo versus a 1 second lifting and 1 second lowering tempo. Of course, Time under tension per set was substantially more with a 6 second lifting and lowering tempo. Three studies out of Japan find long term muscle growth is enhanced with slower repetition speeds that prolong time under tension. For example, one of the studies by Watanabe and colleagues had untrained men perform three sets on the leg extension and leg curl. Quadriceps and hamstrings growth was superior after training with a 3 second lifting and 3 second lowering tempo compared to using a 1 second lifting and 1 second lowering tempo. Furthermore, a recent study out of Brazil established when equating time under tension between two different rep tempos, muscle growth ends up being similar. One group performs sets of 12 reps with each rep lasting 3 seconds in duration, while a second group performs sets of 6 reps with each rep lasting 6 seconds. Time under tension per set were 36 seconds for both groups. Growth of the chest and triceps was similar between both groups. So, the data overviewed so far collectively suggest time under tension may be integral for muscle hypertrophy, but they have notable limitations. With the Brazil study that equated time under tension between two different rep tempos, their results cannot truly suggest time under tension is integral as no comparisons with other time under tension durations were made. A 36 second time under tension was the only duration utilized in this paper. With the Canadian Bird and Collie study, finding greater myofibular protein synthesis with a longer time under tension, they did not equate proximity to failure. The 6 second lifting and lowering condition involved performing repetitions to failure. The 1 second lifting and lowering condition did not perform repetitions anywhere close to failure. They simply matched the number of reps performed by the 6 second lifting and lowering condition. Similarly, the three studies out of Japan finding greater hypertrophy with slower rep tempos that create longer time under tensions also did not equate proximity to failure. As an illustration of this, we noted Watanabe and colleagues found greater cord and hamstrings growth after training with a 3 second lifting and lowering tempo versus a 1 second lifting and lowering tempo. However, both of these conditions involve performing 3 sets of 8 reps with a 50% 1 rep max load on the leg extension and leg curl. With these training variables, using a 3 second lifting and lowering tempo is going to induce much greater fatigue and get you closer to muscular failure versus utilizing a 1 second lifting and lowering tempo. All of this begs the question, what happens when we get subjects to perform reps to or close to failure? Does a longer time under tension, or a time under tension in the 30 to 60 second range, still end up producing more hypertrophy? The answer is no. A study out of Brazil by La Sereda and colleagues had subjects train the unilateral leg extension for 3 to 4 sets of repetitions to failure with a 50 to 60% one rep max load. Leg 1 trained with a 1 second lifting and 1 second lowering tempo, while leg 2 trained with a 3 second lowering and 3 second lifting tempo. This produced different time under tension values, 
and leg one involved a couple of sets performed below the 30 second threshold that's sometimes proposed to be essential for gains. Yet, growth of the rectus femoris and vastus lateralis ended up being similar between legs one and two. Another study out of Brazil by Chavez and colleagues echoes these findings. Subjects trained the unilateral leg extension for three sets of reps to failure with a 70% or one rep max load. Some subjects trained one leg with a two second lifting and two second lowering tempo, while their other leg used a self-selected tempo that ended up involving an average 0.9 second lifting and 0.9 second lowering tempo. Time under tension would have been greater for the two second lifting and lowering leg, yet gains in vastus lateralis size were similar between both legs. We also have a 2016 meta-analysis by Schoenfeld and colleagues, which combined the findings of four other studies and established when reps were performed to or close to failure. Individual rep tempos from the range of 0.5 to 8 seconds were comparably effective for evoking muscle growth. If we need even more evidence, the research on heavy versus light loads provides this. Numerous studies now indicate so long as reps are performed to or close to failure, Loads between 30% and 80% of 1 rep max are similarly effective for muscle hypertrophy. With 30% of 1 rep max loads, individuals very generally tend to perform up to 30 to 40 reps, while with a heavier 80% of 1 rep max load, individuals very generally tend to perform between 7 to 12 reps. Thus, the time under tension would be much greater with loads on the lighter side of the spectrum, yet they do not evoke any more hypertrophy than heavier loads. Matter of fact, some research indicates loads heavier than 80% or 1 rep max may also be able to evoke substantial hypertrophy. But most of these studies did have subjects add extra sets when training with heavier than 80% or 1 rep max loads. For example, Schoenfeld and colleagues compared 7 sets of 3 reps per exercise to 3 sets of 10 reps per exercise. Both conditions involved reps in close proximity to failure and hypertrophy ended up being similar between both groups. The author of this study noted in an Instagram post, the seven sets of three reps group attained around a measly nine seconds of time under tension per set. Presumably, the time under tension in the groups of the other studies performing five or fewer reps would have been similar. Thus, we have some evidence indicating time under tension values as low as nine seconds can still be substantially effective for hypertrophy provided overall training volume is sufficient. It's clear to see a wide range of time under tension values are comparable for evoking muscle hypertrophy, but there likely exist min and max thresholds. As just alluded to, we have some evidence indicating time under tension values as low as 9 seconds can still be substantially effective for hypertrophy, provided overall training volume is sufficient. But what about max thresholds? Firstly, we know endurance exercise, such as running, cycling, or swimming for very long distances, involve extreme amounts of time under tension, yet they produce minimal muscle hypertrophy. But in a more traditional lifting weight scenario, a study by Shawenka and colleagues provides a potential insight. Previously untrained women trained the leg press, squat, and leg extension each for three sets a session. A normal group trained with 80-85% to of 1 rep max loads, using a 1-2 to two second lifting and 1-2 to two second lowering tempo, while a super slow group trained with a 40-60% to 60 of 1 rep max loading, using a 10 second lifting and 4 second lowering tempo. The researchers noted both groups trained in close proximity to failure, but slow twitch and fast twitch fiber growth from the vastus lateralis muscle ended up being greater for the normal group. Based on some calculations, the super slow group likely attained a time under tension per set between 84 and 140 seconds, so somewhere around here could be the max time under tension threshold for optimal gains, but we undoubtedly still need more research to evaluate this. What about exclusively slowing and prolonging time under tension in the lowering eccentric phase of an exercise? Unfortunately, the research is unclear and conflicting in this area. Two studies have found with a preacher curl and using a 1 second lifting tempo, using a 4 second lowering tempo tended to be better for biceps gains versus using a 1 second lowering tempo. 
A limitation is the differences in both these studies were not statistically significant, indicating it's not clear if the differences between groups reflect a true difference or are just the result of random variation between groups. A study out of Japan found with a back squat and using a 2 second lifting tempo, thigh size gains were similar between using a 2 second lowering and 4 second lowering tempo. Another study out of Brazil found with leg extensions and using a 1 second lifting tempo, rectus femoris and vastus lateralis gains were similar between using a 2 second lowering and 4 second lowering tempo, but vastus medialis gains were greater for the 4 second lowering versus 2 second lowering tempo. Muddying things even further, a study out of the USA found with leg extensions and using a 1 second lifting tempo, gains in anterior thigh at one region were similar between using a 1 second lowering and 2 second lowering tempo, but gains at another region of the anterior thigh were actually greater for the faster 1 second lowering tempo. All in all, more research is needed to elucidate the effects of manipulating the lowering phase duration. So long as you're performing reps to or close to failure, a wide range of time under tension values are similarly effective for muscle hypertrophy. Provided overall training volume is sufficient, time under tension values as low as 9 seconds can be viable for evoking significant muscle growth, while a time under tension beyond 84 seconds might be suboptimal for gains. Finally, more research is needed to evaluate if there's any benefit to slowing the lowering phase of an exercise exclusively, as the current data in this area is unclear and conflicting.